while you're turning there, I just want to make a couple of points. Uh, we have a need where uh, we need a child care situation on Tuesday, this Tuesday. And uh, we have a family that has three children ages five, three, and one. And if you can help with that child care for a few hours on Tuesday, uh, please let us know tonight. Uh, you can let me know would be fine. Even if you could uh, take care of a couple of them and somebody else take care of one, we can divide the duties, but we just have a kind of an urgent situation here. If you could be of assistance, please see me after service. And everyone said amen. It is so good to be back in the house of the Lord. It feels like Father's Day. I have eaten till I have eaten till I have eaten this week. So, but uh, my cup overflows is... Brother Burnett was talking about, and it does. The Lord's been good. I give honor to, on Father's Day, I give honor to my dad. He's no longer with us, but I give honor to our pastor, who is definitely like our spiritual father. Amen. <laughs> to all of our dads, amen. want to um, I thank the Lord for my wife. She's, she brought me to church years and years ago, got the Holy Ghost, we've been in this together these, I don't know, 37 years or so, 30, yeah, something like that, 37 years, walking with the Lord, amen, and she keeps me in line, she keeps me honest, <laughs> amen, but if you'll join me in Luke chapter 17, I won't be long tonight. We have a snack bar afterwards, but that's not the reason. Just want to bring some things to your memory. Preach to you a little bit tonight from the book of Luke. Very familiar story. Luke chapter 17, we'll begin in verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria in Galilee. He went through probably the vilest area, Samaria, and probably the poorest area, Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, because that's what they were supposed to do. But they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, can, can I interject something here? When he saw their faith, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And they knew what that meant. They knew the old law, even though they were in Samaria, even though they may have been a part that wasn't in the church and wasn't in the world. When you're in Samaria, you're neither in the church or in the world. You're just in the middle. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, everybody say, one of them. When he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Verse 15 says that this one leper came back says he turned, verbally he worshipped. He cried out and began to worship God, giving him glory for his cleansing. And then he also worshipped him physically. He came and fell at his feet, which was a custom. We bow at times, or we used to bow. But they would even bow in those days to give obeisance or to give respect, to give honor. And he came and not just bowed, but gave himself at his feet in worship. And the Bible says, and he gave thanks. I want to preach to you tonight something that I believe is the will of God for your life. I want to preach to you on the thought of be the one. Be the one. Look at your neighbor and say, be the one. Amen. You may be seated. Why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord and thank him tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. When we think of Thanksgiving, most people think of the fourth Thursday in November. 
People think of turkey and dressing and pumpkin pie. Now, I know some of you aren't traditionalists, but that's what most of us think of. It's an American holiday, you know, and all the fixings. By the way, a couple months ago, back at Christmas time, I was in a country store with my son-in-law, and we went to pick up a few things for the Christmas dinner, and we saw on a sign right there in the middle of the store. You know, you go in, in the a store and it tells you what's on this aisle or that aisle, but right in the middle of the store there was one, and it said, Pizza Fixins. That's exactly what it said. No G, just Pizza Fixins. Anyway, back to Thanksgiving. <laughs> family, as family in America, we gather for the Thanksgiving holiday. You know, we eat till we're stuffed. And there's probably football somewhere on the schedule, too. And you know what? It may be June. And I know today is Father's Day, but tonight I want to remind you of the power of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in June. I want to remind you of the power of Thanksgiving. I'm here to remind you tonight that every day should be a day of Thanksgiving. Every time the doors open, we ought to be in the house of God. Every time we have a chance, we ought to thank God. 1 Thessalonians 5, very familiar, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. And there's a whole line of them, but I'm just going to give these three to you in verse 18. In everything give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I'm telling you, the will of God for our lives is that we give God thanks. Because it's a part of our praise. But in the church, I think it should be a little different. I want to show you something tonight talking about the will of God for your life. But in life, give thanks. The Bible says the dead praise not the Lord. You know, we, we come to church, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard it. You know, it's too hot. <laughs> be thankful we've got a roof to keep the sun off this evening. It's too cold. Be thankful we got air conditioning. Folks, we're working on it. We're tweaking it. Believe me. But just come in and be thankful. You know, I'm thankful for a dad that I saw that I wasn't raised in truth, but I saw an example of devotion and prayer day in and day out. In the morning and the evening, I saw it over and over. And even in the times of loss, we can be thankful. My daughter Jess was 32 when she passed. But at seven years old, we were told that she might not make it. They did not have a cure for a blood disease she had at that time. But we had, if you will, 25 years of life to enjoy after that. I have a brother who passed away last year. He was not supposed to, he was supposed to pass somewhere around age 20. But I was able to, last May 27th, to attend his 59th birthday before he passed away a few weeks later. I want to tell you, there are things that we can be thankful for in life and in death. There are many things we can be thankful for in our lives. There is a lack of thankfulness today. You know, some might say it's a, it's a lost art, but it's not really. It's a new thing, not really. It's always been that way. But, you know, there are times that we are ungrateful. There are even times we forget what God has done for us, that we can't see His hand working in our lives, and because we don't see it, we're not thankful. We think about it, but do we say it? This man, this one man that came back, he came back and he voiced it. Everybody heard what he said. He voiced it. We forget about God's promises. We forget about God's goodness. And most of all, we forget about His mercy. You know, watch watch this about Peter. Peter, Jesus called him out and they were fishing. And then He said, cast your nets on the other side. And they couldn't draw all the fish in because there were so many fish. And then He came and He did what this leper did later. He came and fell down and said, I know you're the Messiah. I know you're the Christ. I know you're the Son of God. He said, he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And so Peter's following Jesus all this time. But then after, you know, Peter really messed up several times, but especially the week of the crucifixion. He really messed up. But what's interesting to me is that after the resurrection, Jesus appears to Peter and John on the way to Emmaus. Jesus appears to 
the disciples. Then he appears to the disciples again when Thomas is there. And then there's a time when he appears on the seaside. And there's seven apostles there, seven of the disciples. There's seven of them. And what's interesting to me is after all that Peter had been through, and then he saw the resurrection, and he saw the power of God, and he saw the wounds in his hand and in his side, <laughs> Peter says, you know what, boys? I'm going fishing. Didn't Jesus say, come follow me? Jesus has resurrected. Jesus has not ascended yet. He's shown himself to the disciples. And the Bible says in John 20 and 30, with many other signs that if it were written, the world could not contain the books of it. With many other signs, he proved it. And then Peter says in the very next chapter, boys, I'm going fishing. Can I tell you something? I believe Peter was ungrateful at this time. Can I tell you something else? Don't go fishing in the sea of your past. Don't go fishing in the lake of your past. Don't go fishing in the sea of forgetfulness. Don't go fishing where you've been before and the God's called you out of. Leave it there. And then God, God is so good to us. What does he do? He comes along and he says, he says, cast your net on the other side. And what happens? The same thing that happened Peter the first time. They got a boatload of fish. Matter of fact, they got more than a boatload of fish. Is it any wonder the psalmist said, he, over, or he loadeth me with benefits daily. How about instead of God constantly bidding us? And how about instead of God constantly and always waiting on us? We come and thank God. We come and worship Him. Why not remind God of His Word? Why not remind God of His promises? But you know, you know, I was successful before I came to God. <laughs> you're not only ungrateful, you're forgetful. We're made in His image. Sir, ma'am, if you think that you did it all on your own, you're clueless. We're made in His image. And it's no wonder that we're, we're gifted. It's no wonder that we're talented. Because we're made in the image of God, to be sons of God. You know, sometimes we're surprised by acts of kindness. Did you hear what happened on the train the other day? This woman walks on the train and this man gets up to give her her seat. And she, she was surprised. She passed out. When she came to... When she came to, she said, thank you. And he passed out. <laughs> Folks, thanksgiving is not a learned behavior. John Maxwell says, when you're born, you already owe nine months rent. I was talking to somebody the other day, and we were just talking about itching, you know. Yeah, I said, yeah, my shoulder's itch. He says, my back itch. And, and then they said, well, you know, how come I can't reach that spot? You know, that you just can't reach that spot. I wish my arms were longer. I said, no, you don't. You'd be an orangutan. <laughs> you know, we ought to be thankful for a lot of things. But then, you know, some folks are just unthankful. You know, you're in checkout and there's no thank you. You're in a drive through and... There's no thanks. You hold the door for a lady at the restaurant. How, how many of you people have this happen, or guys had this happen? You hold the door for a lady at the restaurant, and the whole family comes through. <laughs> and the next family, too. They think you're the manager or, or the help. You know, you're, you're just there, like you're trying to pass the door off. <laughs> they just keep going and going and going. Even the men, rock, the men walk by, too. And, you know, most people don't even think about it. Most people just, they're so busy, they're just going on. You know, it, and we get like that. We're too busy sometimes to give honor where honor's due, to give recognition where it's due, and just simply to say thank you. But you know something, folks? It's not new. But as a church, we need to take note. We need to take note from Luke chapter 17 that one came back. One came back. 
Where were the other nine? We see here it hits at the heart of God. Look with me in Luke chapter 17. Next verse in verse 17. Where are the rest of them, he's asking. So Jesus answered, Where were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? From the New King James. Except this foreigner? It's like he's not even addressing him. He's coming and thanking God and praising him. And it's like Jesus is just looking at everybody else saying, Where's the rest of them? Wasn't there more? Didn't I count ten? You know, you may say, well, you know, but God sees my heart. That's true. But nobody else does. And we need the example that this man had. He came and it said with a loud voice, he worshiped him. And he came and he fell before God and he gave thanks. We need to take, take note of this. You can't tell me it didn't grieve the heart of God. Ten percent. Ninety percent walked away never giving thanks. Oh, they were excited. They had been cleansed. They'd been healed. They, they were on their way. But something that another gospel tells us that, that this man was told by the Lord, go and be made whole. I don't want to be cleansed and not be whole. If there's anything that I want, I want my soul to be saved. I want things to be right in my heart and in my mind, especially with God. See, that's the problem is, is sometimes unthankfulness is so bad. Romans 1.21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. The New Living Testament says it this way. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship Him as God or even give Him thanks. They began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. And it is just, it says, because they glorified Him not and were not thankful. And those were the very things that the leper, the one, be the one is what I'm talking about. He came, he glorified God, and he thanked him. And we find in Romans 1.21, when you get into the debauchery of sin and the, and the sadness of what sin can pull you down to, the downward spiral at the very top of the funnel is unthankfulness. You'll find it again in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 through 4. I don't even have, I don't even have this on their list, but... I'll just say it briefly. For men shall be covetous, blasphemers, unthankful, and unholy. It's interesting to me that they become unthankful before he considers them unholy. Fierce, despisers of God, those that are good, traitors. Unthankfulness is listed with covetousness and blasphemy. When we lose our conscience, effort to give God thanks, we lose our conscience as a whole, and this whole list of things, it's the beginning of the downward spiral that I mentioned. But you know what we can do? We can be the one. We can be like the one. Back in Luke 17, verse 19, he looks at that one leper and he says, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. The Word of God teaches us that there is an order of thanks. An order of thanks. The leper came and glorified him and gave him thanks. He thanked God. I said he thanked God before his healing. You know, sometimes we have the mindset of, you know, if somebody does something nice for me, I'll say thank you. Sometimes I joke people, you know, I'll tell them I'll do something. They said, well, thank you, brother. I said, well, don't thank me yet. It ain't done. But, you know, they say that because they, they trust that I'll do what I say. And we ought to be that way with God. We ought to thank God. The single leper was not healed yet. He was cleansed. But he understood the significance of the moment. He realized that this was the one who was worthy of all glory and honor and praise. He realized it was God in flesh. 
Emmanuel, God with us. He realized this was the Savior of the world. This was Jesus. But I want to tell you, I see a thread throughout the Scripture that there is thanksgiving before anything else. In 2 Chronicles 16, or 1 Chronicles 16, I believe it is, you'll find David, when they finally got the ark and they bring it in, and it says he built a house and he built a place for the ark and set up a sanctuary there, and they brought it in, and he wrote a letter and gave it to Asaph, and it was the song of thanks. We find it when we look into the Psalms. We find it in Psalms 106, in Psalms 115, in Psalms 116. It's the letter of thanks that David gave to be put to music, saying we thank that you have saved us and that you brought your presence back with us. I'm telling you, God wants thanksgiving. Look in Psalms, a few, first, a few verses with me. Psalms 100, and, and most of these are familiar verses. Enter into his gates with Thanksgiving into his courts with B and and bless his name. You know, oftentimes I've told people it's kind of like when we come on to the grounds, let's begin thanking God. You know, a lot of times we wait to see how service goes. We wait to see, you know, how the music's going. Man, does it get an upbeat? We, we see it with a choir, man. There's something nice and soft and. And smooth, and we're just sitting there just enjoying the moment. But man, all you got to do is pick up the beat. You ain't even got to play anything, man. The drummer just goes, We come alive. We're always waiting, we're responding. I'm telling you, that's not the order of Thanksgiving. The order of Thanksgiving is give thanks and then worship the Lord. I want to ask you tonight, sometimes we, we talk about, you know, God hasn't done this for me. Have you thanked him yet? What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Why, we, why do we give thanks and bless him? For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth to all generations. God, we're the one that's God saved. Many are called, but few are chosen. But God called each of us out of all the people of the world, out of all the nations. Psalms 50, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify my name. Again, thanksgiving is before the glory. Thank God by faith. You know, you might say, well, you know, I'm not being healed. I've, I've been praying for a healing. Have you thanked God? Psalms 107. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And then declare his works with rejoicing. Again, Psalms 116, 17, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Listen, when it seems nobody else will do it, you do it. When it seems like nobody else is, is being thankful, you be thankful. Why don't, why don't you stand right now? Let's just begin to thank the Lord. Whatever it is you need, have it in your mind. You know, begin to thank. If you need the Holy Ghost tonight, why don't you thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost? Paul said, I thank my God. I speak in tongues more than you all. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Begin to thank him. Begin to worship him. Before you ask him for anything, just thank him. Be the one. Be the one tonight. Singers, if you'll come, that's it. That's it. Just worship the Lord right now. If nobody else will give him glory, you give him the glory. If nobody else will thank him, you thank him. I don't have to, I don't have to wait to see if the food tastes good. I'll go ahead and thank God for it. You don't have to wait and see if the preaching's good. You can go ahead and thank God for it. You don't have to wait and see if the service is good. Go ahead and thank God for it. By faith, by faith, God heal me by faith. Touch my body by faith. Oh, Lord, I thank you tonight. 
I thank you tonight. Oh, that's it. Why don't you step out from your seats? Be the one. Come to the Lord tonight and give him thanks. Worship before his presence. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we glorify you. We praise you, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. David understood the importance. Uh, oh, he gave thanks. Uh, and then he began to worship the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. They took the ark and they brought the ark in from Shiloh. And they brought it in. And they, every few steps, took six steps. And then they sacrificed before the Lord. And they gave thanks. Uh, they gave an offering of sacrifice, an offering of thanksgiving and worship before the Lord. Why don't you just worship before him tonight uh, all that he's done for you, all that he's blessed you, all that he's saved you.
sister Lord oh God you know the needs in their life you know the words that you've spoken in their life Lord Lord they may not have come to pass yet but we thank you by faith we worship you tonight Lord oh God yes we thank you Lord bless my brother my sister Lord Lord bring it to pass Lord, as we turn our hearts toward you, as we turn our hearts toward home, Lord, the leper, he turned and he came and he said thanks and worshiped you, Lord. Tonight, Lord, we turn, we turn back to you, God. Oh, Lord. If the Holy Ghost is moving. There's some of you right now letting loose of some things you've held on to for a while. That's it. When we have a heart of thanks, it makes a world of difference. your burden upon the Lord. Cast your cares upon the Lord because He cares for you. Oh, so often we carry things too long. Just give it to Him. Thank Him for taking it. Thank Him. You don't have to worry so much. God didn't make us that way. That's why people have so much heart trouble, so much stress because they worry too much about things. Cast your burden on the Lord. Cast your cares on Him. He cares for you. What am I going to do to pay my bills? What am I going to do for a job? What am I going to do in this situation? What am I going to do with my coworker? What am I going to do with my family? I'm telling you, just give it to the Lord in thanksgiving and see what he can do. Worship him. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Oh, honor him and bless his name. Across this sanctuary, clap your hands unto the Lord. Shout unto God with a voice of praise, a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. He's given us the victory already. Thank you, Lord, for the victory.
Oh, the Lord's still moving. It's wonderful. I'm so glad there's been a lingering presence. We've come expecting before services, the Lord's moving. After service, the Lord's still moving. Amen. Aren't you glad? Aren't you thankful? Hallelujah. been a busy week just had the men's thing we have a snack bar tonight for those going to Dominican Republic amen if you'll help us support that tonight thank you thank you so much for your support it makes a way that we can those of us who can't go we can give for those that can go we're not all oh, we're not all able to go, but we're all able to give something. Amen. Put in support of that. And it's fellowship. Amen. This week's another big week with Vacation Bible School. Ahead of it, I want to thank every person that has been involved and that is going to be involved in Vacation Bible School this week. And I believe God's going to do great things among our children. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So Wednesday through Friday is Vacation Bible School. We have Pastor's Bible Study here Wednesday. And then uh, Tuesday, if you can help on Tuesday uh, without child care situation, I have three children ages 1, 3, and 5. If you can help, please see me right away. Matter of fact, if you can help me, can you just raise your hand? I can see you better from here. Sister Burns, Sister Caprio. Brother Jay, I thought you had your hand up. It's just your base. Praise God. Amen. If you if if you few will see me very quickly, I thank you for that. Amen. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Let's have a wonderful week together in the house of the Lord with all that we do. Be safe. Come have some fellowship. Thank the Lord for your food.